those who are joining us online today, welcome to One Worship Place, where we believe in the love of God and loving one another, the teaching of the word of God, which empowers us in every area and every aspect of our lives. And once we are empowered, that we are to go out and influence the world. God wants to influence the world through us, and God wants to influence the world through you. So enjoy the service. God bless. Enjoy the word of God. God, everybody, praise him and praise him. Oh, praise him. We got to praise the Lord. We thank God for his compassion fails not. And his mercies are new every morning. So you got to thank him for that. I'm excited because God is a good God. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. And he's keeping you and he's keeping me. Amen. Our message for, de- to the, for today is your stability is in God. Your stability is in God. Isaiah 33 and 6. Your stability is in God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, for bringing us to this time of service where we can hear your word. Open up our hearts, O God, that we may receive it, our ears that we may clearly hear it, O God. And, O God, help us to apply it to our lives. We give you all the glory and the honor for what you're going to give us today, what you're going to feed us today through your servant. And so, O God, I thank you for using me for your glory. In Jesus' name, let your kingdom come and your will be done. Amen. Glory to God. There is a saying that some people use to describe the feeling in their legs when their legs are weak. It's my leg feel like jello. Why jello? We all have seen jello in action. It is a solid edible substance that is easily moved. It is unstable no matter what you try to do to it or where you place it. It is never stable. Right now, everything about our world seems to be like jello, unstable. Our economy, unstable. Our government, unstable. Our communities, unstable. And from time to time, our emotions, unstable. Some of our relationships, unstable. Stability seems to be so far away. Many are having conversations about when things were more stable and thriving, even though a few setbacks came in between. But it seemed like it was never like this. Oh, how we often do not appreciate what we have until it is gone. Will some sense of stability come around again in our lifetime? Only God knows. This brings us to Isaiah 33 and 6. Let's read this together. Times when wisdom, I'm sorry, wisdom and knowledge will be stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Wisdom and stability will, will, wisdom and knowledge will be stability of your times. Times, in this instant, refer to the time of trouble. The prophet is crying from a place of deep distress, like some of us are crying out to God today. Stability, what is meant by it? Dictionary.com defines stability as the state of being stable, firmness in position, continuance without change. Continuance without change. The only unchangeable stability that we will ever have in this life is true God. For the word of God says in Hebrews 13 and 8, 
that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The benefit of having Jesus in your life is stability, which the prophet describes as wisdom, knowledge, and salvation given to those who reverence God. For those who reverence or fear God, they will find him to be the source of peace and security. What makes us stable when we're in a peaceful place and we feel secure? Consistent security. Let's explore this concept of stability further. Amen. Knowledge. Knowledge is power. We should treat knowledge as a valuable commodity. Everything in this world can come and go, but no one can take away the knowledge that you acquire, especially the knowledge given to us by God. Come on, somebody. Even King Solomon, who is said to be the wisest man on earth, wrote as advice to us, Wise people store up knowledge. Proverbs 10 and 14. Wise people store up knowledge. Now is the time to be amongst the wise. I encourage you. Now is the time to be amongst the wise. What we do with knowledge stored up will impact our stability. Knowledge comes mainly to what we hear, so our ears must be open to receive. Don't receive knowledge from every and anybody, because sometimes people say they got knowledge and they don't have nothing like that. For it is written that the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Proverbs 18 and 15. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. In times like these, we need to absorb knowledge, not only for survival, but in the word of God. The apostle Paul taught the Colossians that Christ is the treasure of all knowledge. When we think of treasure, the idea of a valuable possession should pop into our minds. A valuable possession, something that is worth a lot. Let's read together Colossians chapter two, verse three. In whom all, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The whom is Christ. Not only is knowledge a treasure, but also wisdom, which we will get to next. First Corinthians chapter one, verses four and five implies that we are enriched with knowledge through Christ. Let's read that too. I thank God, I thank my God always concerning you for the God, for the grace of God, which has given to you by Christ Jesus, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you may, that you were enriched in everything by him, Enriched in everything by him and all utterance and in all knowledge by him who is Christ. When I think of enriched, a few words come to mind and one would be prosper. This passage is telling us that stability comes through knowledge Christ gives us in this life. When we have gained from stability, our lives will prosper. We will not only receive the knowledge we need for stability in Christ, also wisdom will accompany it. Wisdom. We talk a lot about wisdom here at One Worship Place. 
because it is one of the keys to living a prosperous life. The prophet Isaiah said that wisdom will provide stability. Isaiah 33 and 6. How does wisdom provide stability, you may ask? Wisdom helps us to navigate the obstacles we face in any situation. If we let wisdom lead us in every circumstance, jello will not be an option. I don't want jello to be an option for me, and I don't want jello to be an option for you. Instead, we stay standing on a firm foundation. That firm foundation is Jesus, who is our rock. This brings us to Proverbs 2, verses chapter 2, verses 10 to 12. Let us read this together. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, Verses 11, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Verses 12, to deliver you from the way of evil. So I'm telling you, verse 10 tells us that wisdom must enter into the heart. Just like Jesus, just like Christ must enter into your heart. Verses 11 helps us to see that wisdom will lead us to make the right decision which will preserve our lives. How many want our lives to be preserved today? We all want our lives to be preserved. Verses 12 indicates that wisdom will deliver us from danger. Come on. We want wisdom to deliver us from danger. How many times wisdom can keep us from being in a dangerous place when we do the things that are wise? It is not wise for you to go and stick a pen into a, 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 a socket, an electrical socket. Anyone knows that when you stick a pen into an electrical socket, you can possibly execute yourself. Execute yourself. So think about it. Keeping wisdom, the wisdom to not to do that keeps us from danger. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 5 tells us that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Christ's wisdom will enrich your life. When Jesus is in our hearts, he delivers the wisdom needed to stabilize us in the midst of crisis. Now we can seek wisdom from all directions, but today I am directing you to seek it from God in your heart. Let's look at a conversation between God and Job. Job 38 verses 36 to 37. Who has put wisdom in the mind? Or who has given understanding to the heart? Verse 37, who can count the clouds by wisdom? God asked Job these questions knowing that Job already knew the answers. The answer is God, for there is nothing impossible for God. Luke 1 and 37 tells us, for with God, nothing will be impossible. What can preserve you in a crisis that is unseen? Because right now we're, we're in a crisis that is unseen. But what can preserve us but God? Just like Job, that's like God told Job, I'm telling you today, it is but God. But God, who can save you from danger seen and unseen? But God. Salvation belongs to God. The wise know that salvation belongs to God. Let's go to salvation. Finally, the prophet implies that only God can bring stability through salvation. Salvation is not only about being saved and rescued from hell by accepting Jesus into your life. 
that is not the only form of salvation. Because when we think about salvation today, that's all people think about. But God is a God that saves outside of saving you from hell. God has always been about saving his people from disaster, which was too much for them to bear. It is like how God saved the people of Israel from Pharaoh. How he saved them from famine. These are things that are not have nothing to do with hell. But it has to do with saving them, preserving their life for another day in the land which they are living. Have you ever seen a man walking on ropes or on a rope? Most of us have seen this on TV or at a circus. In order for the man to make it to the other side safely, he must apply knowledge and use wisdom for there is no one to save him if he falls. Unlike that man, if we put our trust in God, he will save us because God is our savior. Salvation belongs to God. This has been the confession of many through the existence of the world. I recall Jonah. Now we all know the story about Jonah. Jonah was trapped inside of a large fish for three nights and three days. He cried out to God, salvation is of the Lord. Jonah chapter two, verses nine. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So Jonah is already saying, God save me and I'll praise you. Lord save me and I'll do what you say. We need to be crying out that same thing today. Lord save us and we will comply. King David could not have said it better in Psalms 3 uh, verses 8. Salvation belongs to God. When we reverence and honor God, God will find ways to preserve and bring stability to us through salvation. Keep in mind, God's salvation is a part of your stability. So keep that in mind. God's salvation is a part of your stability because we don't know what he's saving us from to keep us on level ground. In closing, no matter what rope you are crossing in this life, know that you will need knowledge, wisdom, and salvation in case you fall. And all you're getting, get the knowledge that God provides. And all you're getting, get the wisdom that God provides. And all of your getting, know that he will save you in time of trouble. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Because he is a God that brings stability in the midst of crisis. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercies right now. We thank you, O oh God, that even when things are shaky, when things are not going the way it should be going, when things are unstable around us, and even in us, that you, O oh God, are the one that can provide stability. We are all searching, many are searching, O oh God, today. We need you to stabilize us in this time of crisis. 
So God, provide us with the knowledge that we need to navigate from day to day. God, provide us, oh God, with the wisdom that we need to prosper in this time today. God, we ask you, oh God, keep us from danger seen and unseen. Save us, oh God, like only you can save. God, do it for your glory and for your name's sake, because we are yours. And, oh God, we reverence you. We honor you because you are a mighty God. And we know that there is nothing impossible for you. God, every question you asked Job, he knew the answer was, but God, it is you, God. And so we thank you right now for it all. We thank you that every day you're saving us through your mercies and your grace. Thank you for every day you're strengthening us. Oh God, when we are weak, you are strong. And so we thank you for this, God. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We don't want to believe that everyone has a relationship with Christ. But we want you to know that it is important for you to come into that relationship. It is definitely important for you to come into that relationship. We don't want we don't want you to be cheated of an opportunity to be in that relationship with God. So we're offering you today, we're offering to walk alongside of you in that relationship. And so we say a prayer here, we call the prayer of salvation because we're asking God to save us from the things that will cause us to not to enter his glory, to enter the place of relationship with him. And so we first have to admit a few things. We have to admit that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he died for us and rose again. He died a brutal death for us. He didn't die just, oh, this, you know, brutal hanging on a cross for hours, bruised and battered for us. And so we have to admit that. We have to know that. We have to come into a realization that that's what he did. And then we have to admit that we're sinners. We've done things wrong in the sight of God or maybe done things wrong in the, to others in the sight of God that God do not like. Then after we have admitted those, oh, those things, because you can admit them right now as we're, I'm speaking, I'm talking to you. I'm walking with you. They admit those things that after we've admit those things that we believe, but we got to believe in our hearts. We got to believe in our hearts that Jesus has forgiven us. And because Jesus has forgiven us, God, the father has forgiven us as well. And we can come into a relationship with him by confessing with our mouths that he is Lord and savior of our lives. We got to open up our mouths and say that because I believe whatever you, whatever you say out of your mouth and you really truly believe it in your heart, it will become a part of you. God wants to be in your heart today. So say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Wash away my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you said that prayer with us, we want to know. Call us, text us, email us. Whatever you need to do to get in contact with us, we are available to help you to walk into this new relationship, to help you in your relationship with God, to walk alongside of you in that relationship to encourage you and to empower you. If you said that prayer, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. God bless you.